What's up, gamers and fellow YouTubers? Welcome to Critical Author. My name's Kevin. Today, let's talk about when was the first time you ever saw a video game? When was the first time you played a video game? What was the first major franchise you played? That's what I'm talking about in relation to my own experience. Downloadable content. Microtransactions. DRM. The order DLC. It is a lot of content. The blind. Stupid fucking fanboyism. Okay, so this is how this went down. It was like 4th of July, Independence Day, something to that greater effect. I don't really remember. It was something. I don't really remember fireworks, but it might have been some kind of holiday. The only thing that I remember is we were at our cousin's house and, well, we weren't going home. And we didn't live very far away from my aunt and uncle, but for some reason, dad couldn't drive. <laughs> now that I'm adult and you're an adult, you probably could figure out why he couldn't drive. So we were going to stay the night there. So us kids, which is like me, my little brother, my oldest sister and my little sister camped out in the living room who by the way my oldest cousin Pam and Mary were in the living room playing on this little mysterious device known as a Nintendo Entertainment System and they just happened to be playing Super Mario Brothers now when I walked into the living room to go to sleep and saw this I became massively curious like what is this I just I never heard of it never heard of a video game never heard of Mario Nintendo even the shit that came before Nintendo I never even heard of didn't even know at that time existed all right I was just introduced to Nintendo and Super Mario Brothers not that I even knew that that's what the machine was let alone the little guy that was jumping around on these brown things that look like a brown turd and the weirdest looking turtles I've ever seen, okay? Now I laid down in such a way, like literally this. Here's my monitor, that's where the TV is. The only difference is the TV's up on an entertainment center. So this was me on the floor like this, all right? My, the back of my head to my cousins because I can't see if my eyes are open. Ironically, my other siblings, I would occasionally hear my cousins get mad at them because their eyes were opened. They turned to look at the TV. I had laid down so that I was already facing the TV. I was also kind of close to the TV. It, it wasn't very comfortable. But my thinking was, is that if they thought it wasn't comfortable for me to be looking at the TV, then I wouldn't be looking at the TV. My plan worked. So I watched them play this whatever it was at the time. Super Mario Brothers on the NES. But I didn't know this. And I was in awe at this. There was something on a TV that you just didn't simply watch. You could control. Like this This was sorcery. This was some kind of magic. Like this is better than a movie. Because I can make the decisions. Which of course that's my thinking at the time. But not 100% the reality of it. But yeah that was the first time I was ever introduced to a video game. Now, I would have other experiences throughout the years. There was one where my cousin, who I'd never seen in fucking years, like years, I didn't even know his name. I just knew he existed. That was it. And he was coming to visit his mom for two weeks. So he, my aunt called my mom, be like, hey, this is happening. Can, can your son come for two weeks? My mom was like, yes. So I went there. It was the summertime. I went there for two weeks. We played the shit at a Super Mario Kart, all right? Like 95% of the time we were playing Super Mario Kart. We did watch some movies as well, but like I said, 95% of the time we was playing Super Mario Kart. I'm surprised the Super Nintendo didn't fucking heat up and explode from how long we played that fucking game. From the moment we woke up, maybe we would take a break around lunchtime to eat lunch, go outside, throw a boring boomeranger around, and then we would only do that for like 20 minutes, 30 tops, and then we'd be back in the house. Hey, let's go back and play Super Mario Kart because this boomeranger thing isn't very entertaining or fun at this moment in time. And I even remember that, you know, classic, you know, two people playing a two-player game, something happens, something goes wrong. And I think it even happened a few times we were playing a single-player game of, like, whose turn it was. We would get in an argument. My aunt worked, so our cousin, which was his sister, would be there. And she basically tried to punish us. Like, we couldn't play the game. We had to go outside, play a boomerang. And that's what we did for the rest of that day until, you know, our aunt came home and she got in trouble for I don't know I guess disciplining us you know my aunt's way of thinking was like what are they gonna do for two weeks they're here they're here for two weeks what are they gonna do they just can't be outside throwing a boomeranger all day as if we could be inside rotting our brain on an amazing video game <laughs>
And then, of course, let's see. Ooh, here's one for you. All right, Super Mario World. My mom and dad had this friend called Mike and Ricky. I would always ask if we were going to go to Mike and Ricky's house. Like, the weekend would come. Are we going to Mike and Ricky? Okay? And that's because they had a Super Nintendo. And, like, I would say 75% chance if we went over there, we would get to play the Super Nintendo. It was a pretty high chance. So... I was always excited. And we went there a lot. Probably more than some of my aunts or uncles and some of my mom and dad's other friends. So I was always constantly asking if we were going to, hey, we going to Mike and Ricky's? We going to Mike and Ricky's? Hey, are we going to Mike and Ricky? Now, somewhere in my parents' brain and Mike and Ricky's brain, they had formulated this idea that the reason why I always wanted to go to their house was because I had a crush on Mike's wife. <laughs> Like, no, not even close. I learned this as an adult, you know, like I think somewhere in my 20s, my mom and dad explained this to me. And I'm like, no, <laughs> I had a crush on that Super Nintendo. That's why I always wanted to go there. That's why I asked if we were going there, because it was a pretty good chance that we would be able to play it. The Nintendo 64 is the first console that my parents bought for like Christmas when it came out. My little brother unwrapped the console and then my older sister, my younger sister and me unwrapped a game. I don't remember what game I unwrapped. I want to say Super Mario 64, but I could totally be wrong in that retrospect. I just know I un unwrapped some kind of game. But I also remember going to our aunt's and uncle's house. Different aunt and uncle from the Super Nintendo with my cousin. And and that was, it was more of a like 45% chance that we get to play the Nintendo 64. The majority of the time was my uncle and my dad taking it. In fact, fun fact, when we actually got the Nintendo 64 for Christmas one year, my dad hogged the machine. Like he was on that thing like a fucking gamer. <laughs> he was on it playing Super Mario 64. He was the first one to beat it out of all of us. Why? Not because he was good, but because he played it the most. He was the adult of the house. I get to play. All right. I was the second one to beat Super Mario 64. My mom tried it. She sucked. So she didn't play it. She was more of a Monsters, Inc., Casper, uh, Tetris, bust a move kind of video game player. Anything that was based off of a cartoon or a movie, she more than likely had such a video game. That's how that went. And obviously, I, because I became very good in video games, I was the video game nerd of the family. I was the one that was always questioned about, hey, I don't know how to do this. I remember we went over to one of my mom and dad's friend's house. I don't even know their name. And they started talking to my parents about this game they were playing on the Nintendo 64. Happened to be a Zelda game. I don't remember what Zelda game. And they could not figure out how to get to this other area. They said there's a drawbridge and that's all that there was. And they're all, well, my our, our oldest son, he plays video games. He's pretty good at them. Maybe he could take a crack at it. So they turned this machine on. They're in the area. They hand me the controller. I look at it. I see, and I don't know how this was not obvious to them. I see the drawbridge. It's up. I look up next to it, and there's like a bullseye, a target. And I was like, well, okay, do I have an arrow or something to throw or shoot? Sure enough, I got arrows. I shoot it, hit the target, the drawbridge drops. And I was like, and these people have been playing this game how long? And they didn't know that that's what they needed to do? Because I never played a Zelda game. So... I honestly thought my, my parents' friends were pretty fucking stupid because they had been playing the game. And something tells me that they had to have been introduced to that mechanic at some point in the game. But yeah, so, you know, I have a lot of memories in, in relation to video games, you know, like the, the first time I played Mortal Kombat, the first time I played Killer Instinct, Super Mario World, and then learning that there's all these secrets in the game and trying to unlock them. Oh yeah, good times. Good times, ladies and gentlemen. Now, the first console my parents ever got, like I said, was the Nintendo 64. Once they got that, they got an NES, a Super Nintendo. Then they eventually got a PlayStation. I was the first one to get a PlayStation 2. Then eventually my parents were uh, to get one. So yeah, this is just kind of a quick little story on my introduction to video games. You know, how I was introduced. Um, obviously, I probably could go in depth with almost any kind of franchise, but then this video would be quite long. So, plus, we need content for other days. You know what I'm saying? So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video in some fashion.
or form, ladies and gentlemen. And remember, gamers, if you're not voicing your thoughts concerns about the bullshit in gaming, microtransactions, loot boxes, and all that other crappy stuff, you just might be a part of the motherfucking problem.